out here to the bar I keep mumbling and get the roll call out of the way. Chair Person, I had a good go out there. Committee Member Val Marquez. Committee Director Scott Johnson. Uh, Jorge Garcia. Here. Okay. So we got four members. Constitutes the forum. Okay. So we're going to start. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you for um, the U.S. Department for presentation and coming from so far to be here tonight. Um, so we're going to move the agenda around just because we want to give a little bit more time to see people come in for the presentation. So we are going to do, um, we don't have any public officials here um, other than Mr. Wada from Lincoln Heights Library Council. Thank you for being here. And any public comments?
education committee and a, and a panel and a group from the from the land use committee. It was a very well attended town hall meeting. Um, and I want to go back and say for the record that I wish to commend the committee members from this group, being Jorge Garcia, um, Gal Marquez and George Plantation for helping out with that with that, that meeting. It's very well facilitated, both sides were heard. And and we decided at that point that we, we were able to hear from a group of speakers from each side, all the pertinent documentation that was submitted for that meeting is right here. Uh, for example, we heard from about 14 public comments. We allowed people up to about five minutes time to express their, their thoughts on the issue. Um, and, then, and then it went from there. We, we did that primarily as a fact-finding meeting. It wasn't set, it was more an attempt to hear both sides on this issue considering the, the information that was brought up. Now, on Monday, in addition to this committee, Monday night at 6 o'clock, um, the, the report will be made at the Education Committee, because the Education Committee was involved in this too, and uh, it'll be written. I'm still working on that, Scott, and you've got allergies, it's hard to look at a computer screen without your, your eyes, it's going drip, drip, drip the whole time, so forgive me for not having you report here, but since that time period, we came aware of some other documentation involving that location. One of the documents was had to do with a hearing that took place in 2004 with a zoning commissioner, and the reports are this this is this um, information here. And one of the things that this um, zoning committee dealt with was the issue of parking and zoning for the property. And at that time period, the document that was presented to us, there was a blank application for a zoning exemption that was submitted with this paperwork. The zoning commissioner put a long, I mean, once again, anybody would like to copy of this, I can make copies available. But the time period, long story short, the zoning commissioner Basically, in looking at the zoning, zoning for that area, basically it said that the, there was going to be a maximum amount of people that you like the property and there would have to be parking available. That decision was a standing for up, from 2004 to extend, the decision was final for about five years standing, okay? So, so we have this, we had the original letter, okay? Then recently, we were made aware of a letter from the Building and Safety Department regarding issues with the zoning. One of the issues that was brought up was whether the location was actually zoned, legally zoned, to operate suicide. Because on uh, city records, the location is zoned for industrial business uses, okay? Not for school. Now, under California law, a, a, a school entity who steps in and to put their authority over the city in regard to any zoning exemption for a school site. The letter that was submitted to us, okay, was from the Building and Safety Department, and basically it stated that the school district had never made an attempt to submit paperwork for a zoning exemption to a certain uh, jurisdiction over that. Long story short, the school did not have any paperwork basically justifying the to, for their operation. There was no zoning, there was no paperwork filed on behalf of LA to Unified to justify the operation of that school site. Long story short, the school district never follows through on uh, any of the paperwork it would have been done for whether it was a public school or a charter school to file any paperwork with the city of Los Angeles Building and Safety Department to, to, to take jurisdiction over that location. Thus, the city of Los Angeles still has jurisdiction over that location and um, 
And there are some serious questions, as the letter will state, that the school is operating without proper zoning, zoning barriers for that location. What I will do Monday night is I'd actually would pipe this up and I will submit the, the paperwork. I have it all here. Um, but um, we just say what this committee should look at is, in my opinion, this committee should come up with a motion crafting that the office, the city council office asked the building to go back and investigate further how uh, this school is allowed to operate without the necessary zoning requirements and the zoning documentation. And these are people that we're dealing with the education of children and health, health and safety issues of all the children that should be a paramount concern for this body is that we have the school that's operating out of compliance. And for the people involved in terms of traffic issues and so forth, then this is something that would be needed to be said not only to the city council office and the respective uh, city department, but also I would request that this a letter investigating this be sent to the LA City Unified Office of the Inspector General to fall to be, conduct an investigation why this school is operating without the, the necessary zoning variances and permits. Any questions? The public comment on that? Mm -hmm. did, did we send a letter to confirm some of the concerns that we had in that town hall meeting? Wasn't there a motion made to try to address that with how you invite? No, actually, we are not at that point yet. Actually, we have not. I have tabled the report. Uh, if I may, this is the letter here that was submitted to a concerned property owner. And uh, I'll go ahead and read this letter, okay? This, and I will, for, for the record, I'll leave the, uh, the person's name off here. This letter is in response to your inquiry regarding enforcement agency land use authority over LA USD charter schools. More specifically, the school located at 4990 and 4970 Huntington Drive South, aka Academic Summit of Del Pueblo. The city attorney's office will find that under Cal California School Act of 1992, charter schools are public schools. They may be exempt from city zoning regulation by the school district, LA City Unified, for local, from local ordinance, including zoning ordinance. The government set code section 53094B. Additionally, government code section 5390.3 underscores the process of exemption as applies to charter schools as well as long as charter schools located when the school district general geographic jurisdiction. In the past, where LUSD has gained a grant of charter school exemption for local zoning restrictions, the charter school has presented evidence of the exemption to the chief zoning administrator, and the chief zoning administrator has confirmed the exemption from city zoning requirements in a written letter. The Office of Zoning Administration completed a review record regarding the charter school location at 4990 and 4970 on the Drive North. The review found no evidence of the OZA is receiving a request for exemption from the zone from local zoning regulation from either the LAUSD or charter operation. And thus, the Chief Zoning Administration has not issued not issued a confirmation of an exemption in the written letter. Since an exemption was neither granted or confirmed by the OCA, LAUSD does not have the authority to regulate land use or zoning code violation, and the Department of City Planning maintains zoning jurisdiction, and the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety is the enforcement agency for city planning. And that is, was written signed by David Lara, uh, Department of Building and Safety. Okay. So that letter states, and this letter was stated on uh, June 20th, 2013, that basically LAUSD or the charter school did not file the proper paperwork for a zoning exemption for that location. Did you want to make a motion? We can make a motion on this. Public comment at this time. Do you have a public comment card anywhere? Yeah. Um, I'll make the motion.
Um, there's, I know that, that the uh, resolution deals with uh, permits uh, that don't have and are operating uh, a school, but I would try to add to the fact that they're in violation due to the issue that there's a liquor license establishment within 150 feet of the school, and it is against the code, against zoning code to have any school to be operating within 150 feet of a known school. Now, if I'm not mistaken, my friend, uh, I would request my friend, uh, Mr. Pacheco, to kind of give us the ordinance on that. Well, actually, uh, well, I don't have a lawyer, but he says it. Hold on, hold on. I'm asking him to help me out. No, but point of order, but you are in public comment. Okay, well, he would have I'll, I'll, I'll have him speak on his own. Okay, fine. So what I would like for this board to consider is the fact that the school is in violation due to the fact that there is a liquor license and a business operating, selling liquors within 150 feet of that establishment. I would like to have that added to the resolution because that is 
a major flaw that is a violation of the law. That's number one. Number two is they have, I don't know if they currently have right now, but what I was told is that they're operating a playground in a parking lot. And the parking lot was is zoned to provide parking for the establishment, not zoned or not quantified as a playground. So that's another issue I would like to take up, the fact that uh, parking lot conversion into a playground. So those are two items I would like to uh, take up. The liquor license, 150 feet violation of the law, zoning, and the, park and the playground violation. And uh, also, just for the record, uh, from what I understand, they didn't have the necessary uh, health uh, permits to operate a cafeteria, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if they resolved that issue as of right now, but I know they were in violation of that in the past. So I would like for that to be, you know, submitted for the record that they were serving food without the necessary uh, county uh, permits that, that was required to uh, to be uh, to be to prepare food for the children. So those are the three violations I would like to have you consider adding to your letter. Um. Saying that the powers to be that decided to put the 
kids in harm's way, if that is the idea here. And somebody has to pay for the loss if there's going to be a loss of the license to the potential neighborhood for that revenue. And that, that's the way I uh, researched it. And that's the only comment I have. I'm not a lawyer, but that's how I do it.
school functions how it's supposed to function, and the business functions how it needs to function or to flourish, to prosper, to bring in business. So that's that's why that letter was uh, was uh, was drafted. So then we end that debate: is it L O U Z or is it the same? Was that in response to this letter that you received in 2000? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? I wasn't here in 2011, but uh, that meeting, those meetings that we had with building and safety related to this issue was because, you know, we were getting, you know, complaints and like anything, we have to follow up with those complaints and, and make sure that there's, you know, something done to mitigate that problem. Yeah. Uh, do you think the concerns that building Yeah. And they're still not addressed. Yeah. We did think about still suffering from a yeah. lack of addressing some of these problems. And this is a new product to us. So now we're in a situation that we need to do something. Yeah. Now, I don't know what I mean. You're, you're talking about working with the and also yeah. the school. But, uh, I don't hear you talk, talking about helping us kind of resolve this situation so we could go forward. I know there's a lawsuit pending with the and uh, So I think that's that case, I think we have to keep ourselves out of that. Yeah. But I think some of these other issues that are so pending, they need to be addressed, and, and we're, you know, we're trying to do that. Yeah. So I think the councilman willing to work with us to try to at least get some answers. To no, no, of course. I mean, we're open to that. I mean, that's why part of the long debate was always who oversees the school, who's responsible in terms of. Whose jurisdiction was it? It was always, well, is it like LUZ? Is it the city? But then we, that, that's why that letter came in response, like, it's the city. Been that way for five years, how much now we're working here? Yeah. 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 Um, 